Good heavens and HD double hockey sticks wherever you come from, internet people. Today is sometime in May. And I am Shannon, the Anime Misfit, welcoming you to another episode of the Community Corner Podcast. Now, post 1,000 subscribers, because I can finally say that. So, I'm going to give my... Give myself a clap while Lamp does some awkward speaking of Lamp. It's Lamp, y'all. Uh, I have a new microphone called the AT2020. It's not as sensitive as I would like, but it's I'm going to get to work at some point, so here it is. And I don't have a microphone. I'm just on my Lampsty Dampsty l- microphone on my laptop. Because it's still, we're in week three of staying in the room, staying in the, whoa, whoa, we're in week three of I'm stuck in the living room. Every someone help bring, bring corn chips. Don't you have so corn chips? Are, n- no, that's the sad part. But I do have something instead to eat. It's Calamundo. No, I didn't say Calamundo. <laughs> Mundo. Oh, I mean, that's a new one. <laughs> I thought of, because it's Cal, it's everybody. I tried. I, I, because I thought of TV, I thought of Telemundo at the exact same time I heard your name. It's Cal, everybody. Say hi. Hey. Uh, hi, I'm Cal. I, I mostly just do, like, character illustration stuff and occasionally make YouTube videos about anime or cartoons and stuff. Uh, but it's, I'm trying to upload more frequently. So, yeah, it's, it's great to be here. We also call him in the anti-tube circles the guy that sounds like Shaves, but is not Shaves, but also has... I have heard that a few times. With a K. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, tell everybody in more detail what do you do and what videos you've made in recent that they may be interested in. Um, so recently I've mostly just been doing, like, character illustrations and fan art on Twitter and TikTok and stuff, which has been working a lot better than I expected. And and whenever I make uh, videos on YouTube, it's usually these very short, uh, punchy reviews about different shows that come out in, or basically anything that really strikes my interest. The most recent ones I've done were a review of Skate the Infinity, and my most recent video was a video acknowledging the fact that a video I made two years ago about Komi-san Can't Communicate not getting an anime adaptation was recently proven wrong. So uh, I've gotten plenty of comments uh, informing me of that uh, discretion uh, recently, which has been pretty interesting. But yeah, usually just short reviews there, little, just fan art pretty much everywhere else. Oh, that's good, that's good. Um, have you been, like, watching other recent anime recently, just to kind of ice break things in? Besides skate, I saw your skate video, it was very, it was very poignant. Is that the word, Lamp? Poignant? Poignant? To the point? Poignant. 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 I didn't learn Uh, hook on phonics, people. (laughs) (laughs) I have been enjoying, like, Shadow's House lately. I've been, like, because I like the, uh, sort of... Uh, I don't remember exactly what the word is. That sort of gothic Victorian aesthetic that it has. With I the, call it uh, the Black Butler vibe because I'm a weeb. It's a gothic. Yeah. It's a gothic Victorian. You're right. Yeah, it's definitely one I've been enjoying. I've been meaning to watch Odd Taxi because I keep hearing that it's like really good, but I just haven't been watching as much anime lately. But I've ste- that's definitely one I'm going to go back to, at least before the next season starts. So, uh, other than that, like. Maybe Nagatoro? I, I've read the manga for that, so I'm not super interested in seeing the anime, but I've also heard that it's a good adaptation, too, so. I mean, I feel like one that not has watching as much anime, despite being the anime channels. I guess, again, me and Lamp have been talking about how there's just a lot of anime, maybe too much anime coming out to consume it for one single person, even for, like, somebody who takes a break to watch anime. It's a lot. And... Like, for example, I love Shadow House as I've caught up with the manga. But, like, even then, I'm like, I still, I'm amazed I still haven't watched the anime yet. I've heard good things about it, and I do generally want to watch it. But I'm like, finding time to sit down to when there's just so many other things to watch. Yeah, Damn. there's, like, a lot going on. Like, I don't, I don't know. Just go, I'm just, I just pulled up, like, live charts just to see what was going on. And there's, like, 50 different shows here. And I don't recognize, like, more than, like, or, like, less than a third of them. It is so weird. But, yeah, I do like the adaptation for Shadow's House. I read a bit of the manga, and it seems like they sort of tell the story in the anime of, in a very different way. Interesting. And and don't get me started on Skate. I I introduced my friend to Skate the 
Skate the Infinity, and they have never looked back since. They've gotten hooked on that show, and I can barely talk to them now. They're like, don't talk to me. I'm, I'm viewing my skate. Yeah, I get that. It kind of draws you in like I mean, that. Tony Hawk is a really great anime. Wow. Wow. <laughs> yeah, his, his appearances definitely elevate the rest of the story. <laughs> yeah. He's like the old, like, he's like that old guiding figure that has all, of, like, the ancient knowledge that they need to progress. I seriously I mean, I... did not expect that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we, that, that's the first thing that comes to mind. Is like, skate the anime. Oh, yeah, Tony Hawk is only in there. It's like, no, I know. It's just. I think that would definitely sell, though. But I used to play Tony Hawk Skate back in the day. That that was those were my jams. I just didn't think he'd just show up in Japan at complete random. <laughs> but anyway, um, this is not an episode about seasonal anime. Once again, this is an episode about something more serious, but something more. It's it's kind of it's like part serious part disappointing and just kind of part batshit crazy. Um, we are talking about the, the fixing of anime. So, actually, Cal, would you like to explain in your own words what, what your interpretation of when I when you hear the words fixing an anime character, what do you hear? Well, there's two ways to look at it. The most common one that people talk about is the idea of taking the aesthetics of the character, like how they're designed and re sort of remaking it to be either more, I guess, I'm going to say diverse, but I feel like there's a different word, like changing their body type, skin color, hair hair type, that kind of thing to create something that's slightly different, but it's still kind of the same character, and then making the assertion that they're making it normal in some way, or not, not or in some cases. Like, the most common example I saw was with Izaki-chan, when that uh, whole controversy was blowing up and people were like, oh, her breasts are too big. Let's uh, change it so she's a little bit, you know, bigger in other areas to sort of balance that out. Or, oh, she looks too young. Let's make her look older. They tried to fix the character by changing the original design. And another way of looking at fixing anime could be talking about the story itself. Like, oh, the actions of X character don't make sense. It would make more sense if they were doing this. But that's usually a discussion of the story, which most people seem to be more comfortable doing. I think it's just when you change the design of the character is when you get into all of those controversies. Yeah, I totally agree. I, I'm more focused on the the aesthetic changes simply because of how archaic a lot of the arguments can get. And obviously, I am not the most analytical channel in the Annie verse. But I what I know what I know about my opinions is that. I don't like what I see, man. I just don't feel it. It's just not Kino. So I want to focus this, the episode of fixing on like, not just how I, how we feel about it, but more like maybe try to ask why people do it. I think why, why do people fix art? And like some speculations. So this is not going to be an episode like trying to like tell people it was right or wrong. I'm just going to say, but maybe there's like a, like some people may have the same solution. Not solution or Maybe that's where they're stemming from. So I thought we look at, we start by talking about two of the more recent controversies in detail. When I mean recent, I mean they've already been talked to death, but you know, I'm always late to the, to the, to the buzzer. Um, let's start with the easier to talk about one, the Yuzaki-chan debacle. I think the Yuzaki-chan and Om is obviously the Dragon May one have the same issue. Um, I think people like to focus a lot on the boobs, on the boobas a lot. And that's like the first thing that got to me as like the anime fan. It's like, it's like, oh, not even the, oh, sh the head is too shaped or she doesn't look proportional for her age. It's more like the boobs. They just see big boobs and are like, it's a problem. Yeah, I see what you mean there. I was a little concerned by that. Well, not concerned. I'm, I'm trying to find the. I was surprised when I saw that that was like the main focus of discussion because I thought like this is anime. This has been like a thing for a while. And I noticed that with Azaki-chan, it was mostly because they assumed the character was younger than she actually was. Like, the character in the show is 20. So and in college. super surprising that that would be, like, her physique. Like, like, maybe, like, someone could make the argument that it's exaggerated to a degree. But again, it's an anime. There's going to be some sort of creative liberties there. People's eyes aren't that big either, but no one really focused on that. So, I, I don't know. It's definitely something that people sort of latched onto when 
I feel like you could make the same argument for dozens or hundreds of other shows. Yeah, I mean, I don't know why Uzaki Chat in particular was the was the target. Maybe because it was new. Maybe no, it had to both. It had to be the meme. One thing I've kind of noticed between a lot of the controversies, it always happens to animes where they have a big meme image. And I know that Uzaki, a certain pose of Uzaki Chan was like a was like the poster child for the anime and the meme. Therefore, people picked on it. Like it was, oh, yeah, it was that I picture guess. for laughing with like the lip tooth thing with her hand like, eh? and like so with no context. You know, no, the oh. you know what I'm you know what image I'm talking about, right? Uh, maybe I've definitely seen so a lot of things. Uh, I'll I'll put it on screen. Oh, let's see. Yeah, Lamp will put it on screen. But like, it's a certain image, and I feel like it. Like the Akira kind of goes in that same too. Like they take it that you could take an anime image out of context and it gets popular and people want to pick it apart. But that's not. But that's not really why I think where I'm trying to get at right now. I guess firstly, let me say like, yeah, it seems kind of ridiculous that not only is she 20, she's in college, and the anime is pretty tame. Like we're not even talking like on the levels of redo. We're not talking on like, interspecies reviewers or any like content warnings like that. It's just a simple slice of life anime about a dude and a girl going out. Yeah. And barrel stuff at, stuff happens. So like we'll get to the Ockery part, the Gawkery one later, but like with the with this one, I just feel like, yeah, they just feel like, oh, she's an adult, but she looks like a child. I actually have a completely different theory. I keep saying I'll wait till later, but like there's like a com I have like a whole theory on this one. Why people are pinning on the whole in general, I think, like, because both of them have the same thing of, oh, they look like children, therefore, we're worried, but therefore, we must fix it. It just felt like that's just, it was such a harmless anime in terms of the context, and it just feels obvious that, like, a lot of people shitting on it are people who haven't even watched nor, nor care to take a look at the anime. They just kind of saw the meme image, it got popular, and won their, one of their fixing hot takes, but that's just me. I mean, personally, in this type of, uh, varying opinions and self-righteousness i think it's also projecting insecurity <clears throat> but at the same time it's also hypocrisy at its finest yeah yeah like, i don't know like i feel like in some cases i don't know if like someone's like interpretation sort of got way more popular among the people who like to make the corrections like like in the case of like there's just one redraw that i saw of like Izaki chan when i was like trying to do some research for this because I wasn't super caught up in the drama. And one of the redraws that I saw Hiro Hei used in one of his videos that got like a million views was like, a, a, it looked like a fairly tame redraw of the character. And I felt like them saying like she is now normal felt more like, like a joke in that case. And I feel like everyone kind of took it way too seriously in that case too. So I feel like it sort of like became like a cycle where X person would do this thing why person react and that would get a lot of attention and that would bring the attention of more people that would want to try to fix the character and so on and so forth like it's a cycle i don't know does that make sense like no no it makes no, it, does. it that, makes perfect right. sense lamp you go you yeah. go first you have something to say well i was gonna say because i i saw several redraws not just of anime characters either uh but when it comes down to like video game characters sometimes um, I have seen redraws of, like, Sonic characters. I have seen redraws of, uh, well, that's one of the biggest ones of Sonic characters. Uh, but they're like, oh, well, this is a human version of Sonic. And then someone's like, no, no, this is the correct version. This is all wrong. And then it was, it's like, what what makes the, not only does this fly in the face of the creator, like, if the creator of a show, say, Luzaki Chan or My Hero Academia, if they draw a character that a certain way, and all of a sudden someone's like, no, no, that's wrong. This is the correct version. It's like, are you saying that the person who made the show is incorrect and that the person who wrote it is wrong? Because that's kind of, no, that's not how it works. Yeah, like, with Luzaki Chan, the main sentiment I saw is that her body is in the proportion of a 20-something. Her, she's too short, but her boobs are too big. Therefore, we should change that. And of course, a lot of people came out with the opposite, saying, "Well, I'm a twenty-something-year-old, and I have those big boobs." And I did, and I was like, "Good on y'all for that." In a way, it's kind of like feeding into the nonsense, but like it does prove a point where like you can't just assume that there's no body with that type of body type. And it was, it was pretty normal. Like the boob size was pretty normal if you really think about it for the rest of the films of the anime. Which brings us to uh, the the Dragon Maid situation. Oh boy! 
where her boobs oh. were astronomically huge. I mean, Lukoa's personality by itself is a different per- is a different. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, that's a whole different. I mean, fish to fry, but like can of worms. Yeah, like the difference was in Ozaki Chan, her her boob size and proportions were pretty normal for an anime character in that particular setting. But Akira is like it was pretty like to the to to be fair, the boobs are astronomically huge. We're talking like cartoonishly too big for her to for her size. Like her back must be killing her. I know that's a cliche joke, but like in that case, like she's supposed to be struggling to keep her head up, just from what I've seen of the character. I mean, she is the dragon of destruction, so I guess strictly speaking, I'm sure she can handle it. Yeah. But still, it's not good for practicality. Yeah, of course. Yeah, like she's supposed to be like small, cute, small, cute character with big adult proportions and. While I can see people's, like, staring at it because, you know, the type of design kind of lends you to kind of focus on those assets, that doesn't mean it's any less disrespectful to just kind of fix the art and then tell people they're wrong about it. I don't think I even saw that many, like, redraws of that character specifically because there's not really a lot you can do other than making her boobs smaller because what else can you say about the design that seems fairly, you know... It's, it kind of makes sense in every other case. Like, it just looks like a fairly cohesive design. So if you did do a redraw, you couldn't take as many creative liberties as you potentially could redesigning, like, Azaki-chan, even for, like, a headcanon. Because, like, there, everything is, like, sort of organized into, like, this is what I think a 20-year-old of that age or of that, like, body type should look like. Whereas with her her character, it's just, like, one feature that has to be changed. So... They aren't going to go through all of those other creative opportunities. I don't know. I th- yeah, like, because, like, I'm looking at a picture of her right now of her, like, character model from the official art. And they have her, like, if you look at her from the back side, she looks, her character proportions look completely fine to what she is. It just, it's just when you turn around, then they're like, ooh, <laughs> it's like someone took Photoshop and then just blew up her chest. Like, <sighs> I'm more fun making fun of it than, like, than actually, like, then I what I'm supposed okay I'm more I'm more fair to making fun of the fun of the character design than just I'm right out like fixing it because it still seems kind of kind of scummy because I I think no I think my okay here it is I think my issue for it is that they add a lot of moral high ground to the art fixing they're like oh oh no yeah no doubt yeah like it's not just oh I'm fixing this art because this character looks like shit I'm fixing this art because it's not good for the sake of our children and that it's not representative and. Blah, 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 blah. It's bad for the censorship, bad for the children. We must change it. When it gets into that territory, then that that's more what I'm that's more what I'm trying to protect the design from than the design itself, if that makes any sense. Yeah, I, I kind of anticipated that people would react that way to the uh, to that drag particular dragon made character. Actually, like Korowa Eden actually made a video about that character like several months before the anime would like had any more information coming out about it saying like hey people are gonna lose their mind over this character specifically because she has like massive breasts because of you know the yuzaki chan drama that was happening at the time and he hit the nail on the head like that is exactly what happened and like again with her specifically with this dragon they're like oh she's promoting pedophilia that's why it's bad and i'm like what hold up Hold up. See what I mean? It's like they add a lot of like moral high ground and soapboxing to it, and it just gets on my nerves. It grinds my gears, and I just I can't stand it. And even though I think this design is kind of goofy, it just looks like a st- yeah. It's not gonna. <laughs> it's like too. It's not like danger. Yeah, it's, it's not dangerous. No, I was just saying it's the, it's the good old fashioned trope of the thousand plus year old short girl with with boo with like bowling balls for boobs thing it's just too ridiculous to get mad at and then like people people want to bring i refuse to say the phrase dump something something bring in their politics because i know because i've been trying to keep myself from doing that because as someone who doesn't mind talking about politics i feel like it's kind of hypocritical to kind of then say that i don't know it's just i don't know what i'm saying cal i'm just basically trying to say how i feel and i just feel like it's just dumb to kind of bring it in, bring in this moral high ground for no reason. I think that is quite fair because any kind of attempt to change art throughout history for that matter, people have attempted to say, no, no, 
I am better than this person. This person who made the original work is wrong. It went back to like Renaissance and sketchy and days before then. People had beef about art all the time because they always thought they were better and they were right. It's a trend in human nature that apparently one human has to be on top of any theme, including fan art or actual actual character art. It's still hypocrisy because it lacks a core understanding of what makes variety in art. Yes, some art might be flawed inherently and to an extent, maybe not inherently. It doesn't mean you have to change it as long as it fits in the theme of the show. It isn't harming anyone if it exists. If the art exists just to be a character that's goofy, then what's the problem? The hypocritical Puritans who think that, oh, think of the children. It's like, no, you just want to think of yourself with the children as an excuse. Yeah, yeah, that, I, I see what you mean there. I think, like, another another thing is, like, the, and this is probably, like, a broader idea that I've had about this, is the fact that, like, this exists to begin with is probably because the artist for either Dragon Maid or Ozaki chan probably looked at other art that was coming out, and rather than deciding, hey, I don't like how X or Y is is doing what they're doing, I could do this instead. They went out and made their own work with those changes. Like, I don't, I don't know. I feel like in the case of people offering to make uh, corrections and quotes to these original works, they could take those ideas that they have about those and recontextualize them into their own original stories, since they already, you know, want to be drawing those characters, or at the very least, their versions of those characters, they could just switch it enough to make it its own unique thing, which I feel like would be a more healthy way of having this discussion, because if you don't like that X character is a dragon that's small but has, like, massive tits, then you could recontextualize that, decide, okay, what if I reduce those parts of the character, what could I do with this new idea that I have now? What could I put it into something that makes it, you know, its own thing? Does that, yeah. I... Yes, but my rebuttal to that is going to sound kind of cynical, Cal. So here, sp stay with me now. Um, quoting, quoting Nuxtaku. Yes, but it's an original work. Therefore, no one would give a damn about it. If it was, he said this with the whole redo. He said this with the whole redo thing that like, no one really cared about Redo getting canceled because everybody knew Redo was kind of shit. So if it got canceled, no one would no one would be surprised by it. But I think part of the reason, but I think part of the reason why they pick on these two shows got these shows have a fan base, a positive fan base, they're popular. Therefore, if they pick on these shows without making their own original ideas to kind of change them, then it's more clout for them. And I know I'm being like kind of tinfoil hat here, but like that's something to consider. Like, if 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 it was someone's like OC, for example, no one would really talk shit about it because no one knows what it is, except the person making it and maybe their circle of like people making that particular series. Like, say you were making a series about Gajinka candy bars. Like, may, what if you made like say Cal, you made like a sexy cow version of a Twix bar. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm gonna add that to my list of ideas here. One second. <laughs> uh, that that'd be funny. Uh, yeah, continue. So, say you made a sexy Twix bar who had a twin Twix bar because the whole thing right now with Twix is that there's a left Twix and a right Twix and they're kind of fighting each other for who's the better side of the Twix. It's a big. It's a weird thing. Their commercials are weird. But anyway, let's say one, let's say the original characters and Twix, left Twix Chan has like big bootas, bo big boobs, but a small bust. And the other one has big bust, has like a big booty, but small bust. Would people really come, if you just post shadow posted on Twitter with like no collaboration with like Twix in general, and you just kind of did it for fun, no one would really like, look at it like, oh, child pedophilia, it's bad. But let's say you, for some odd reason, got a deal with Twix and being like, let's, oh, these these things look super hot, man. And Twix was like, yeah. And you were like, yeah. And then you post it with Twix's affiliation. And then all of a sudden, everyone's being like, fix it. It's bad. Let's make 20 videos about it. Let's post it on Twitter. Yeah, but that's and say how that's called internet clout and them wanting to seem like they actually have a valid opinion. And notice how both the Akira girl and Uzaki Chan 
They're they're both they're both tied because oh they look like children, therefore, it's therefore um, we should talk about oh it's cases to pedophilia where Luca is basically having is always showing skin in the same anime of Dragon Maid and no one really calls her out because she looks like an adult. Well, I mean, it's not even that. It's just the fact that, like, you know, she is actually spending, like, a lot of time in the show with, like, an actual child, which I feel like would be a much stronger case than, like, the design of one of the other characters, but... I feel- not to mention, like, Shoda's name is Shoda, and <laughs> yeah. if, you, if, you, if you know where I'm going with this, let's just say if you watch a certain type of anime... Just his name alone just kind of adds to that case of, hmm. Oh, they definitely know. Maybe, <laughs> That's a bit of maybe a the red anime flag. trying to tell us <laughs> like something. But no, she looks, no, we, we shouldn't focus on her. We should focus on the girl that looks like a kid, but has big two taws. Two taws. Well, I think that's a new word. <laughs> Added to the lexicon lab. That's, that's <laughs> just like one taw. <laughs> yes, one taw. So it's I think it's more about the affiliation. If Twix Chan, if Cal's Twix Chan and Twix Chan Wright were affiliated with Twix officially, then we'd see something. But until then, it's just a picture on the internet. Yeah, exactly. And I I guess that is like another thing that like bothers me about this whole trend is this like a l I would I'm gonna say like a lack of sincerity, but I do feel like for some people that are making, like, the initial changes, I don't think they actually want, like, the show itself to change. I think they just like the idea of having a more, like, diverse cast within something that they enjoy. But there are people who do have, like, a sort of malicious intent of trying to rile people up because they know that if they say X character needs to be fixed because of Y, they'll probably get some level of response from people out of it and the same goes for the people who would uh, make like the subsequent video about that change because they're also knowing that this rising controversy would lead to them getting more like views and clicks on their page like the you know like the hero haze and the rev says desus of of youtube like those kinds of uh reactionary sort of channels but i don't know i don't really watch a lot of them so i guess i don't want to make too broad assertions about them and but i don't know yeah you bring a good point cal which brings me into the whole thing of let's ask why why are they doing this besides let's go more detail as to why so i let's focus on the first thing you said i think it's it's not i don't think it's mostly about them wanting to fix the anime but more about wanting to see more representation of themselves in anime and a perfect example case to this is all the My Hero fixes. Oh, God, those. So My Hero has a very interesting problem when it comes to the fixing anime character trend. And it's not that they're fixing, they're not just fixing the anime character's body proportions. They're sometimes fixing the skin color, adding religion stuff to them, and then making them, like, bi, pansexual. And before anybody flags me for being insensitive, I just want to say that this is not to kind of out people who are genuinely making their own versions of anime care of like the My Hero cast. I think there's a complete difference to like drawing Deku in your own way just for the funsies and then drawing Deku in a way just to bait people or make a point about harassing people about them being wrong and you being right. I think it's the context of everything. If you want to make black Deku, that's completely fine up to you. I'm all power for it add dreadlocks and everything. If you want to draw yourself as, like, Bakugo, that's cool. I mostly mean when you do it with the intent and with, like, the text saying, this is person is now normalized, this should how it should be, fuck off. Yeah, I, I, I get what you mean there. That's definitely uh something that I, I, I never really know how to respond when I see that kind of stuff, like, out in the wild of people making, like, oh, X character should be this way. Like, I never know, like, what to say to something like that because it just seems like a weird thing to do i guess like trying to like add that at like i'm trying to think of a good example for this oh wait actually do you guys see that thing with like with hamilton where people are taking like these actual like historical figures and because of hamilton turning them into these sort of like uh high like they're trying to add that sort of representation to like real people so it's like You'd have like uh I know Lupin I know the I know the black Lupin show came out and people were up a ride about that as oh, one yeah, thing. Yeah. I know what you're talking about. 
Like you basically take historical figures in the past and make them like black or Muslim or to kind of, you know, fit into their, you know, fit into their, fit into like their art style or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Now, I'm going to keep it real because I'm going to say this as a black person. I can't believe I'm going with the as a black person, blah, 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 blah. I'm going to use my hero again. Look, guys, look. I think, I and I say this with a heavy hand. I get that we want more black representation, for example, in anime. We have what we, like, Cannon Busters was not the best anime, but it, it was it was something. We get Michigo from Michigo and Hachikin was great. And there's Yasuke is coming out now at the time of this recording. And I heard some good things about that. I do feel like there is a, it, when, it, when it comes to the My Hero issue, a lot of it is we just want to see more representation. It's a good show. People are enjoying My Hero a lot. But one reason they could be doing all this fixing is that they just want to see more different variety in their heroes. And I think, like, fixing the anime is not the answer to that. Yeah, yeah, I see. Yeah, that makes sense. Like, anime is a a, a Japanese export for a reason. So, of course, a lot of their characters are going to be, you know, Japanese of origin or look more Japanese with the weird spaghetti hair whatever thing it's not like i'm mad that i don't like I, there's a lot of there's plenty of black characters or any other characters i've seen they have gotten better at that to their to their credit of course i always want to see more but i feel like forcing the issue to be thing by saying this character should have just been muslim or black or pansexual or anything and that the original character was dumb i think it undermines the goodwill of when we do see a genuine different type of character like a black character or someone who's Asian, well, they're already Asian, someone who's like Hispanic or something or a different, you know, sexuality in these types of shows. I feel like with something like My Hero, that I feel like that's more of the reason why I'm seeing it. Because like the difference between like the Akira and the Uzaki-chan situation is that they're just changing the character's boobs and shit and just saying pedophilia. We were trying to protect the children. This one, I see more of, we just want to see more people like us in the show, but we just don't have those options. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that, make, that makes sense. Like, I, I, like, there is, like, a genuine push to get, like, more diversity there, which I, I think would be, like, a good direction for, like, anime to go in general, even though I think... I'm worried that it'd be, like, a very slow progression, because right now, like, the most, like, deliberate representation I've seen so far was with the, uh, black, uh, samurai anime on Netflix, which I haven't seen. I dropped Netflix a couple months yeah, ago. Yeah, it's so. Oh, I see. That's... Okay. There's also Rocklock. I think his name is Rocklock in My Hero. He was a pinnacle part of the, of the um, overhaul season, where they had to take on overhaul. He oh, was, he, yeah. There's a there's a prominent black superhero in that season, and he was he got a he got a couple of cool lines in. It was a prominent part of the, like the rescue and all that shit. And there are other black p- heroes in my hero, and I'm not saying everybody's just making like black versions again of them of just because like some people want to make a black Deku, and that's all right. Like just to just to know. I just think that and like we have to remember that again, Japan. I'm going to say I don't like saying this again as an excuse, even though they know, like, with 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 anime becoming more of a global export for them. But, like, it is a homogenous country for a reason. Black people in black people in like other nationalities aren't that very aren't that common in Japan. So I, I completely understand worldview wise that there's not many like I wouldn't expect them to make an all black anime if that makes sense if that makes any sense. Yeah, like you aren't gonna find anything like the boondocks there, at least because By themselves. I, I, I wanna be, I wanna clarify. By themselves, they could there are plenty of collaborations with like overseas artists or when someone goes you can tell when someone goes overseas, like with JoJo's. JoJo's was an exception, but a pair I think and someone can quote me in the comments if I'm wrong. I think um, JoJo's creator went to visit America and other countries to kind of get more variety in hairstyles and nationalities before making like like JoJo's Part Three is like has like a variety of people's skin colors. Yeah, I actually did read that. I had this book. I haven't actually read JoJo, but I have a book by the guy who wrote JoJo about writing jojo and he did do a lot of like travel to different areas and i specifically remember he went to like 
I believe it was Greece for book five, but I could be wrong there. I just know that he did do a lot of travel to find references for each uh, part of the story since he had the option of doing that. So yeah, and for think... my... Oh, sorry, Cal, I keep cutting you off. What'd you say? No, no, you're you're good. That that was it. Oh, I was just saying is that, like, I appreciated part two with, like, you know, Smokey Brown, the character, and I made a video about it on my channel already, about how detailed it got with, like, like his character and his strife because that was what happened in the 1940s with black people. And then him becoming the, like the first mayor of Georgia, I was like, it was like, it's like, it's like it knows me. So like it, it, I liked how detailed it got, but for the majority, I think people need to understand that at least on the representation part, this is not the way, this is not how we should be asking for representation. I do think that that as since it's becoming more of a global market, pe that it's not it's okay to kind of encourage more global more globalization of their characters, and they already do do that. And even if they even if sometimes they do get into stereotypes with a lot of their Middle Eastern characters, but I will not get into that today. But that's just one reason. Yeah, that's definitely something I'd like to see more of. Is like because like I feel like, and I'm gonna try to word this very carefully. I feel like. The excuses people can make for a lack of diversity are starting to, like, go down because there's just so much, like you said, like, the globalization of anime is increasing. So, like, in some, like, in, in like, the definition of what qualifies as anime has always been very tricky to discuss when you have stuff like, you know, Avatar The Last Airbender being considered an anime by some, and then that's, like, kind of a highly contentious point. Like, as... The definition of what can or can't be anime expands. The reasons to not include more unique and diverse ideas is starting to go down. Which is probably also why we have like this sort of like increased popularity around like furry anime, like Beast Stars, Odd Taxi, uh, uh, Brand New Animal shows that probably wouldn't have been as popular a few years ago because oh, furry, it's cringe. But now is getting more attention and i don't want to like equate the two in that way i hope that doesn't come off that way i'm just saying like the push for more diversity in like the subject matter and the character designs is something that's already happening i'm sorry i, f I feel like that made more sense in my head i don't want to oh no no you're you're you're, co you're completely fine cal like i understand your point with like the furry shows because <laughs> furry shows <laughs> because like when you're drawing an animal you don't have to worry about the human the human psyche of what race they should be what nationality they should be when they're if they're a fox they're a fox you don't have to make more of a contentious exactly. point than that unless you are tying yeah. unless there's utopia and you tie it to like predators versus prey but that was a and beastars kind of did that too but beastars Oh God, Lamp could get you could, could talk all day about that relationship, can't you, Lamp? <laughs> yes, yes, I can. Um, but I, I think I'm getting a little onto this point, so I want to move on to my second to my second reason as to why I think people fix anime. The mythical demographic is my second reason. So going on to that whole issue of like the globalization of anime, I want to ask you something right now. What do you think is the main demographic for anime right now? I I don't know. I I guess like I I feel like it's it probably just be like for the west. Let's talk, let's let's scope it down to the west and think of ages. Just ages. I guess I I would probably guess between like 16 and 30 would probably I mean that's kind of that's still a pretty broad discuss thing like 30 years like the like but I feel like that tends to be like the age range. Like the youngest I usually see like talking about it are people, like, who are either 16 or 17, but then it goes up to people in, like, their late 20s. It's, I feel like that's, like, the age range I usually see. So... I mean, that's that's about, from what I've seen, too, especially in, like, the 20s-ish is kind of, like, late 20s... Like, mid to late 20s-ish tends to be, like, the ideal range for most anime producers. Exactly. So, without getting too much in a tangent and making this video slash podcast way longer than it should be i think that the people are fixing anime because they want more people to not think it's weird because right now currently in the western animation space there's there's right now a big like de like a big debate about what who animation is for i mean cartoon network already came out with a statement saying that they want 
if despite the streaming era, they want to make the new CEO wants to basically torch all the current shows and make all the new shows vary for younger for younger audiences. They want to make a preschool section. They want to make they want to more focus on the whole aspect of animation is for kids thing, which is not which is not healthy in my book. And Nickelodeon's already been doing that. They want to get rid of like. They want to get rid of the mythical demographic that's not going to, they think not going to buy as much merch. And there's also the whole discrepancy about how a lot of Western cartoon creators, when they make a show like She-Ra or Steven Universe, they say it's for the 7 to 11 demographic, but let's be honest, She-Ra and Steven Universe were not for kids. Yeah. Yes, but I, I, I get what you mean there. Like, I feel like in the case of animation, I I don't understand. Okay, I understand why people tend to associate it more with, like, a younger demographic, especially for, like, marketing purposes and stuff. But at the end of the day, it's just another medium that could be used to create something for any age. So I, it is kind of frustrating to see that kind of kind of issue popping up over and over again, where it's like, oh, animation's just for kids. But, like, it's not, and, like, yeah. there's no reason to even have that debate at this point. It's like, you aren't going to say... So here's my mind. Oh, sorry. Oh, oh sorry. Going. I was just going to jokingly say, like, you don't, like, people aren't going to say film is just for people in, like, their 20s or something. It, it would be a ridiculous statement. I never heard of that. Wow. I, I learned something new today. But anyway, here's where my mind was going, if you can keep up, if you can understand where I'm coming from. So the Western animation world is not catering to the, to the large to the large audience of teen, young, older, older kids and teens that want to watch cartoons. They don't, they're like saying animation is for kids. We're going to focus on preschool and get all that Paw Patrol money. You leave, you leave all these kids kind of like, what do you want to do? We want to watch animation still. Then you see anime being able to like cater to all sorts of mediums and genres and age groups. And they all flock to that. Anime is now in high demand which is why they're making so much anime, maybe too much anime for people to keep up with. And the reason, and thus with the mythical demographic, which I would consider anything from 13 and up, like, you know, PG 13 and up because there's not much Western animation that's catered to thir PG 13 without, you know, ch cheating the system and saying, Oh, it's actually for seven to 11. People want to fix the anime art because they want more. They want people to like not sh run away from it because, despite everything we say about anime being more mainstream, it still feels a little bit underground. Still, considering how the considering the cultural barrier. But do you understand where I'm getting yeah, at? Yeah, yeah. Actually, wait. Now that I think about it, there are a few anime that I think are like in, in sort of like bridging that gap. I would say. Uh, a couple that come to mind just off the top of my head, I would say, or actually the one I want to focus on for the, like this example would be uh, The Great Pretender, which uh, definitely had more Western vibes and felt more like a Western show than a lot of other anime. And then it did include a lot more like diversity in its cast to a degree because like, you know, they're going all over the world for these uh, different adventures that the characters are on Sales. so you get to actually include more diversity in the cast cast which i find which or at least like in like if not like the main cast and like the characters they're interacting with as they go on these different arcs which i thought was good i feel like there is yeah more effort being made to bridge the gap between like the audiences there so it's like you have like the western audience that is used to I guess, like, crime shows and cop shows and, like, misadventures and things like that. And then you have, like, the anime, which has these more sort of, like, exaggerated, like, stuff. I don't want to make, like, a broad thing about anime, but, like, there are shows coming out that are bridging that gap, I, I, is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. So my, my thought process is people are wanting anime to look more legitimized in the Western world. So maybe they're fixing the anime art to curb to those Western sensibilities so that people don't think it's weird. Because I know in the South, back in the 2000s, the biggest issue was if you got, like, for example, I'll always remember the memory of my friend leaving my friendship with her because her parents said I was I was leading her to double worship because anime was child porn. It was that argument back in the day, too, but it was much more ostracizing. Oh. People just saw the animation, see, like, it's not Family Guy, but it looks like for kids. 
what is this what is this malarkey oh goodness oh god they have all this it's bad bad so it's you're being sinful nowadays that's a lot more that's a lot people are starting to understand that anime is more than just it's not that at all but there's still that discrepancy i guess that's thanks to the western world thinking that animation is for kids or the sentiment by big business or whatever tinfoil hat as you can see so that's my is this more of a broader reason and i know and i know that for the average twitter user that's fixing anime art that might not be the scope but that's to me like on a broader reason why people fix anime to kind of show hey anime is legitimate you should get into it it's not weird yeah like like people are trying to like uh i guess round out the edges that can make it difficult to suggest anime like i love Mm -hmm. so like and like their attempts to fix it are just like Trying to like trying to make it like more tame and approachable, which is probably yeah, yeah. I, I see what you mean there. Like trying to make it seem less like something that could probe a reaction from like sensitive people. Because let's face it, the mythical demographic is the main demographic that's going on with anime right now. Anime tends to have like a short shelf life of its viewers. Like like I'm in the older spec. I'm starting to jump into the older spec of anime fans in their late twenties and stuff. But like a lot of people who are gonna watch like the next show in anime, they're they're seeing new types of anime and different types of thing, and may have different morals than us. So like they have to, so maybe they want to just introduce to their friends without it being weird. Yeah, exactly. All right, third thing, because I actually was thinking about this. Um, this is more, this is more of a jumping part from two, but I think the third reason is just the fear that anime is going to get regulated in the West by people because of, oh, child porn. Like, more animes, more places are, like, banning the anime art style or canceling it, if that's the best, that's the better term. Like, Steam is going at, he constantly goes after anime art styled games and specifically said that even if the character is of age or older, if they look like, if their character looks like a kid, they're going to ban it. Hence this whole Steam banning the anime art style in particular. Oh, yeah. And 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 I know Patreon will not post to help, will not or, or have controversies of not hosting people with the anime art style if their Patreon has anime art. Oh, yeah, I heard about that one. I don't really know. What, so, uh, well, I heard about that controversy around, like, Patreon specifically, but... I'm not entirely sure, like, what, like, their qualifications were, because, like, I feel like there's obvious examples I can point to, but, like, broadly speaking, I think if, like, the assumption was, oh, it's an anime style, then it has to go down. I don't, I don't even, I don't know what they, like, draw the line at is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, I understand. Like, with, like I said, I use the Steam example the most because they specifically said if the character who is an adult it looks like a child. They they still consider it bad. Therefore, they ban it, which mostly attacks the anime art style because the anime art style mostly draws people rather young because real Japanese people kind of look younger than they appear, at least according to what I've heard. Like on the general cases, they they tend to look younger or more youthful, and the anime art style has a lot more emphasis on youth. Yeah, just because like in the anime art style, like. Like, specifically things like the eyes tend to be very exaggerated and big and bright and stuff. And I don't know, like, if there's, like, other features that have to, like, work around that. Because it'll leave, like, their head being bigger, which tends to look more childlike. Which, like, again, with like with, like, with Azaki-chan, like, part of the what they did to, quote-unquote, fix the character was reduce the facial features as well. Not just, like like, altering her physique because the anime art style, in their opinion, made her look younger than 20, which is kind of a difficult statement to back up because I could pull other characters that have, like, a similar face type that, I don't know. Is that, yeah. There's there's a lot yeah. that can be changed, but that doesn't necessarily mean it has to be. I think that, like, again, they could be just thinking more superficial reasons why they're fixing the art, but I think that in the back of their minds, because there's been so much fanfare of, oh, this anime is getting banned in Russia because it's bad for children, or 
this anime, this game is getting banned on Steam because of the anime art style. Maybe people are scared that because of all of the pedophilia buzzwords being thrown around, that fixing the anime art will once again make it look more legitimized as, hey, this is not just, this is not bad, this is not child porn, or whatever, or whatever, whatever excuse they give. And it, this is just a way to correct themselves so they don't get banned. No, nah, no, 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 that's kind of going out now. That's kind of exaggerating it because the point of fixing art is to tell people they're dumb about the char- that the character's original design is wrong and is disrespecting the artist. But the point still stands. I feel like it's a, it's a, it's a back in mind to think about. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's a lot that like can be said about like this whole discussion. Do you have any reasons why before we wrap it up? Um, I, I mean, I don't really have like, a lot that I could wrap this up on, but I do, I guess I just want to say, like, uh, if you're doing redesigns for a character, feel free to do, like, whatever you want. It's just when people make this bold assertion that what they're doing will fix the original work is what leads to a lot of this controversy, and it's probably just not something that's worth getting uh, wrapped up in. So, yeah, head cannons, those are super cool. Make as many of those want as you want. I follow a lot of artists who do those. Love to see them. It's just this controversy is kind of ultimately a bit of a waste of time because as much as people argue back and forth with each other, it's not going to change how anime works as a whole as much as just making more anime and allowing these uh, pushes for diversity to naturally affect the process. Because just looking at the shows that are coming out, like, again, like Great Pretender and shows like it, Diversity is coming, and I'd like to imagine, like, the more people are out there making more original stuff, the sooner we'll get to this point where everyone can be happier with it. All right. That sounds great, Cal. You definitely can make more comprehensive sentences than I ever could. Yeah, I I, I've, I was thinking about this for, for a few days before, like, the recording, so I wanted to make sure I could, like, make it at least somewhat succinct. So, yeah. Yeah. As for me, I will say, look, look, people, you can make a black Deku. You can make a white Nessa for all I care. It's art, baby, for art's sake. Do what you do. Do what you feel. It's all right to be like, hey, can you look at my art and see what needs to be changed? And now you can be like, cool, brah. That's okay, too. But when you start taking your art and like, or someone else's like art or an anime's art and being like, this is how it is. This is how it should be. You, you, you're you wrong for liking this thing because it's bad and it's all these political issues. Go fuck yourself. That's when I have an issue with it. It's just, it's dumb, obviously. And I feel like if you're using it as like a subconscious reason to kind of like fix a bigger issue that anime has to deal with, like the fear of banning or the representation or the growing desire for representation or just simply wanting to get your friends in it to it because your friend down the street thinks it's weird. It's it's weird furry porn or something. There are different ways to do it, man. There are different ways to express your love of anime without trying to, like, fix it. And again, fixing is not just making your own head cannings, as Cal said. it. You can make a character however you want. It's not hurting anybody as a piece of paper or digital pixels in the case of digital drawing, because we all know where that goes. Like, for example, if you want to make Lamp a Lady, hashtag make Lamp a Furry Wolf Lady. I am I'm entire... You know what? I will I will do it myself if people don't, but you're all welcome to try. Then that's okay too, man. As long as you're not like as long as you're not those assholes that like will fix the an will fix the Nessa because you think that she's not dark enough. And then you're the Japanese people who are like, Well, you know what? Fuck you, we're gonna make we're gonna make actual derogatory pictures of her wearing a noose or her in a monkey costume as a monkey with big red lips just to fuck we all. That's when it goes too far. And I'm like, that's not Kino, bro. That's not Kino. Yeah. I did not know about that. Holy shit. Yes, it, it got to that point. Some people don't believe me, but there was a time when the Nessa con- where the backlash to the backlash was so bad. People started, like, people were making, like, pictures of Nessa just to piss off Twitter. And some of them were, were really offensive to me. Like the black monkey one with the red, with the ruby red lips. It was bad. It was bad. Yikes. It, it, it the backlash got like I understand people were angry about it about people picking on a Japanese artist who had to apologize about she had to take her art down that's not cool I get that 
I supported the artist. But then, yeah, the people, I don't like the whole go fuck yourself crowd either because they can go too far too. Yeah. Just just yeah. chill. Everybody chill. Anime is going to be saved eventually again. We're going to have another kill the kill moment. We're going to have another great pretender. We're going to have another full Metal Alchemist. Maybe not, maybe. We're going to have another Demon Slayer beat all the comic book sales. Anime is going to be fine. Chill, chill in this economy. <sighs> But I'm pretty much, <laughs> I'm now off my soapbox. I have brought Cal off the soapbox, and I'm good. I think I've said what I needed to say. What about y'all? We must always remember one rule when uh, augmenting anime waifus. One must not uh, distort or ruin the perfect anime waifu. And your idea of the perfect anime waifu is, Lamp? Well, okay, let's let's clarify that. One must not augment or change a good anime waifu. One does not have to be perfect. One does have to be a good anime waifu, a nice character. Do not change them. They are not imperfect. They are flawed, perhaps, but they are beautiful. That's, 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 that's real creamy lamp, but thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Anywho, Cal, thanks for joining us. Again, tell everybody um, what you have, any projects next, where people can find you, all that and stuff you know what the drill uh yeah if you want to find me you can find me on twitter at calamano k-a-l-l-e-a it's spelled in the title or in the description probably uh i'm on twitter tiktok and youtube uh on twitter it's just like the same art as on tiktok but on tiktok it's like formatted in like a mini video things and i occasionally do like tutorials and stuff there too and on YouTube, I do the occasional review. So if you want to check any of those out, uh, feel free to do so, I guess. I'm not, probably not as active as I used to be, but I think I'll probably be able to make more stuff once I get some other stuff sorted out. But yeah. And say your name one more time so I don't say Calamundo for no reason. <laughs> well, I mean, I could do some rebranding. <laughs> Oh my god, no. Do not be a Spanish channel for me, no. No. Uh, I, that, I'm just joking. But yeah, uh, it's uh, Calamano. Uh, K-A-L-L-E-H-M-O-N-O. Calamano, or just Cal change it to Cal. Calamano. Calamano. It's like calamari, but with mono. There we go. That's how I'm going to remember it. Anyway, yeah. um, this video is getting long, and I actually, I already ate, so I can't say I all or do. What, what are you going to do? Consume a lot more tea and then head out to go shopping and take care of the adult stuff. While he's digesting his filthy, filthy Jimmy Johns. <laughs> anyway, goodbye! Bye! Bye. Bye.